You know, many of the great players in Dallas Cowboy history were great on the field, but they had a lot of off-field problems. We can the, the litany of those people are just endless. But today we're going to be talking about somebody who I considered during his prime one of the best players in NFL history, but cocaine and bad decisions and his ego got in the road and it were not for Roger Staubach and other people that supported him in his road to full sobriety, he'd be dead long ago. So today we're going to go Hollywood. And I think you know what we're talking about. The great Hollywood Henderson. Now, Thomas Henderson, nicknamed Hollywood, uh, is a former American football uh, American football linebacker who played the majority of his NFL career for Dallas, but he also played with the 49ers, the Oilers, and the Dolphins. Now, he played college football at a uh, small but prestigious Langston University. Now, born March 1st, 53, in Austin, Texas, a pure 6'2", 220, he went to Oklahoma City uh, High School in Douglas. Now, again, in Langston, led him to be drafted by Dallas in the 1975 entry draft, and I'm still surprised he got him at number 18. He was a first-round pick. He was raised by his teenage mother on the east side of Austin and played football again for the L.C. Anderson High School B team until his sophomore year, which was 1969, when he moved to Oklahoma City to live with his grandmother and find a more stable environment. Now, although as a senior, he earned all city honors playing defensive end at Douglas High School. He was not recruited by colleges because his career had been shortened after having to settle his junior year after transferring. After graduation, Henderson joined the Air Force but quit before being sworn in. Now, he was a walk-on for the football team at NAIA Langston University, and there he personally earned him the nickname Wildman and helped him become a two-time small college All-America defensive end. As a senior, he contributed to the team's 11-1 record in a playoff appearance. He was named the Southwest District Defensive Player of the Year. He started 45 straight games in his college career, which I think is, is just basically unheard of because of all the, the wear and tear. He also practiced track and field, competing the 100 meters and perhaps 100 yards and the triple uh, jump. Now, uh, unofficial uh, uh, publication said he ran 9-5 and 100. Now, the triple jump, jump he uh, allegedly jumped 49 feet. Now, in 2002, because he's purchased his career at Langston, he was named to the University Athletic Hall of Fame. In 2018, he was inducted into the Black College uh, Football Hall of Fame. Again, two-time NAIA All-American, 73 and 74, uh, two-time Little All-American, 73 and 74, and a Southwest District Defensive Player of the Year in 74. Now, before there was a Lawrence Taylor, the, the person who was most well-known for wearing number 56 was Hollywood. Now, Henderson was selected in the first round, 18 overall, the 75 NFL draft, as part of the Dallas Cowboys Dirty Dozen draft. They had many prestigious players he took that year. As a rookie, he focused on special teams. Teams. He eventually returned a reverse handoff for a 97-yard kickoff return for a touchdown, fourth in franchise history, during his second game against the St. Louis Cardinals. You can find this on YouTube. He also blocked a punt in the 14th game against the New York Jets. Now, in 76, he competed with D.D. Lewis for the starting strong sign linebacker position. He remained as a backup and core special teams player. He eventually blocked a punt out of the end zone for safety in the 12th game of the campaign against the Cardinals. Now in 77, he was named a starting strong side linebacker over Randy White, who was moved to defensive tackle. He posted uh, 53 tackles, 3 interceptions, 1 sack, unofficial, and 2 fumble recoveries. He also returned an interception for a 79-yard touchdown against the Buccaneers. He also claimed that he introduced the crossbar slam dunk celebration in the NFL at the end of the play. Now, he also had seven tackles in Super Bowl XII, which of course Dallas won over Denver. Now, Henderson gave himself the nickname Hollywood for his flamboyant play and high visibility lifestyle. He would be seen uh, on the town. He did a famous uh, CBS report uh, saying, you know, Hollywood's all the myth wearing the big glasses. He would wink to the camera all the time, but there was rumors going around that his off-field peccadillos included heavy drugs. Now, in 78, 
he got the injury bug early on. He couldn't start in three games because of an ankle injury. He returned an inter- he did return an interception for a ter- 60-yard t- touchdown, which included a crossbar slam dunk in a 28 nothing NFC Championship win against the Rams, which got him to a uh, Super Bowl against uh, the Steelers. Now, because Hollywood was outspoken, he made trouble for everybody. Before Super Bowl uh, 13, he started World Wars against the Steelers. That ended up with him sharing a Newsweek magazine cover with quarterback Terry Bradshaw. He basically said Bradshaw was so stupid he, you couldn't he couldn't smell cat spell cat without giving him the C and the T. Uh, well, that kind of woke Bradshaw and the Steelers up. He didn't need any of that. But in the game, he also pinned Bradshaw's arms in a famous sack, allowing linebacker Mike Hegman to steal the ball and run 37 yards for a touchdown in the contest. Now, at the end of the campaign, he was elected to the Pro Bowl. The loss against Pittsburgh, but everybody thought with Hollywood and other key players that Dallas, the future on the defensive side, was strong. Now, even though he had great potential as a player, Henderson's destructive lifestyle of drugs and alcohol began to catch up with him, and no matter what Tom Landry and Roger Starbuck and the other veterans could do, he was still working the negatives. During many games, he snorted liquid cocaine from an inhaler he hid in his pants. Now, allegedly, he did that during, during the Super Bowl against the Steelers. The final straw came in 79, during a 12-game against the, a season against the Redskins at RFK. While his team were being soundly beaten to 34-20 on national TV, Henderson mugged for the camera and displayed handkerchiefs with the Cowboys team logo. When interviewed about it, he blamed teammate Preston Pearson, saying that Pearson had asked him uh, to show off the handkerchiefs, which Pearson was marketing as a favor. Coach Landry was so angered by the episode that after, after threatening to wave him, he instead deactivated Henderson the remainder of the season by placing him on a reserve retired list. According to sources close to the team, Landry did not attend for Henderson to ever play for Cowboys again, even though the coach was still personally fond of Henderson. And Roger Staubach said the same thing. You know, he had a million-dollar personality, but he had a five-cent brain. I mean, Roger didn't say that directly, but that's what he hinted at. Now, on May 15, 1980, in the offseason, he was traded to the 49ers in exchange for a fourth rounder, which turned out to be Scott Pillar, a future quarterback for Dallas. On September 19th, he was waived after only playing one game. Anderson believed that 49ers coach Bill Walsh alerted him because he was suspected he was addicted to cocaine. Now, on September 24, 80, he signed as a free agent with the Oilers. He appeared in only six games because of a hamstring injury and played in the Oilers playoff loss to the Raiders. He was not re-signed after the season. In February 81, he became one of the first football players to publicly admit to a drug problem, and with the help of the NFL, he signed himself into the drug rehabilitation program. Now, on June 10th, Henderson signed with the Miami Dolphins, but suffered what proved to be a career ending neck injury in the final preseason game against his Kansas City Chiefs. On August 31st, he was placed on the injured reserve list and was not resigned after the season. Now, again, uh, Lawrence Taylor, perhaps the greatest player ever in the linebacker position, said he was inspired to wear 56 because it was Henderson's number, and boys, he made number 56 look nice. A very, very smooth player. Now, in November 1983, Henderson was arrested for doing cocaine with two teenage girls in California. He was accused of threatening them with a gun and sexually assaulting one of them. He claimed that he gave them drugs in exchange for consensual sex. Because Henderson had no history of assaults or sexual misconduct prior to the injury incident, he pled no contest to the charges and entered a treatment center and remained there for seven months before his 28 months in prison. He states that Hollywood died in November 8, 83, and he has remained clean and sober ever since. Now, Henderson was living the good lifestyle, but something very lucky happened in his life, and I, people say that God, Roger Staubach said, but God had a hand for Hollywood. Now, Henderson made a news again in 2000 by winning the Lotto Texas U.S. $28 million jackpot. He started a charity called Eastside Youth Services and Street Outreach and has made major donations to the East Austin community where he grew up. He also gives motivational speeches and sells videos of his anti-drug seminars, which are called HHH 56 Investments Limited. When asked once by the Dallas Morning News what he does every day having won the lottery, Henderson responded, not a damn thing, and I don't start that until after lunch. He is also the father of two daughters and has five grandchildren. 
Henderson has said publicly that crack cocaine was his downfall and that embarrassing his mother, family, and friends ultimately changed him. And he's now retired uh, uh, fully in lectures across America. But for those three or four years, by God, ladies and gentlemen, in Canada, he was a superstar uh, all over the States. Uh, Hollywood could have been, again, the preamble to Lawrence Taylor. But like I said, a natural talent, but his biggest enemies are himself. Now, two books on Hollywood you should check out. Out of Control, Confessions of an NFL Casualty, which came out in 1987, co-written by Peter Nobler. And of course, In Control, The Rebirth of an NFL Legend by Hollywood and Frank uh, Luxa. Frank's a very good writer, came out in 2004. Now, a very important uh, thing, uh, his battle against Terry Bradshaw was kind of not, not say disrespectful, but uh, Hollywood would kind of be that sarcastic way. But uh, that started a mandate, do not wake your opponents up. Anytime I talk to a young athlete, I bring it forward to Hollywood Henson or the incident, said, if you can take or beat your opponents, fine, but don't, don't give them momentum to try to beat you. And Thomas, unfortunately, Dallas, it wouldn't fit for Jackie Smith dropping the ball in the end zone. I know it's beating a dead horse, literally and figuratively. We would have won that game. But, you know, uh, it is what it is. Uh, Pittsburgh was at the best throw ever in 79. So were we, and we're just, we lost the game by 30 seconds because Jackie Smith would have called, called, called that. We would have been in overtime, and who knows what would have happened. So, ladies and gentlemen, if you like what we're doing here with our Dallas Cowboy podcast, let us know what to like, uh, comment, subscribe, and put it this way. When Holly, when Henderson was on, there was no better. And that's my opinion, and I'm sticking to it. Have a good day. Bye.